Okay, we're gonna box and pour up this altered cast impression that's been made for this partial denture Kennedy class two with a modification space that we don't do. So um, essentially what we've done is impression the edentulous area as if we would a complete denture. It allows us to have better peripheries and do border molding and pick up this, this lingual periphery a little bit in your private practice. Most of the time when you would want to do this would be if your initial impression didn't pick up the retromolar pad, which is the most critical part of this. So what we've done is put a put a uh, impression tray on this distal extension and then uh, re-impression that area. Now we're going to section this off and then we have to adapt this back onto the cast and box it and pour it up and then we'll have a more accurate soft tissue area to go along with the partial framework. So the first thing I want to do is I need to cut back this excess impression material. It bleeds forward underneath the major connector. So I'll, the finish line is where the acrylic is going to going to uh, meet up with the major connector. If you remember this major connector, we asked for one by 28 gauge relief. In other words, it doesn't touch the tissue. So this impression material is always going to bleed forward to that area. Where the acrylic begins and ends is at the finish line right here. And so that's all that we need to alter. So this excess impression material, I need to take and cut that back to that finish line. So you gotta kinda look for it and feel for it and you can peel that back a little bit. But the critical part here is that when we put this on that cast, I don't wanna be pinching any impression material against the stone. Because if it is, then the framework may not be seating all the way and if it's not seating all the way on that cast we've done more more uh, harm than we've improved so this is also called a correct cast impression technique so now i've got that cut back to right there okay next i need to section this off of the cast so i'm going to cut this you can cut it with a die saw or a disc i'm going to use a disc and i want to cut right next to that adjacent tooth without touching it and then down through the periphery this way. The further you go over here, the more you have to box that back in with wax. So I, do, I don't want to go way over to here. I just want to go the area that's going to match up with that lingual periphery as close as I can. So I'm going to cut this with a disc. When you do this with a disc, be sure and keep your fingers out of the way. Keep your thumb out of the way. Don't be holding it like this because this wheel is turning this way. And if you get that halfway in and you twist it, it's going to grab and it's going to pull it this way. And you don't want to pull it across here. So it'll be resting here. Don't be up here like this. Be resting down here. And we're going to cut that across there and across there. Okay, so I've sectioned that off, and then I've made macro retention to help hold the stone onto this. Uh, you can do it with a Brassler burr, but if you do, it's got to go in real deep and at different directions. Dimples are not retention. They don't lock it on so it can't come off. So we don't want dimples in here. If you're going to go in with a burr, you could, you've got to go in really deep and in different directions. Now I should be able to seat this on here, and if, I'm, if I cut it too close, and I did. I'm going to have to grind some more off right in this area so that that can seat all the way. And I want to be sure that there's no impression material touching the stone. So I need to grind a little more off in that area.
So that's really close, but it's there's a space there. So I know that now the framework is still fully seated. The rests, the major connector are all fully seated. The impression material is not keeping it from seating. So now it's just a matter of boxing this back in with wax, the same way we would treat a complete denture where we wanna see five millimeters of land area coming out and defining the periphery for the acrylic for this distal extension. So I'm gonna use rope wax. That's gonna create the land area and apply it about three millimeters above the peripheral length. All the time I'm doing this, I'm holding the framework down. Because if we get all done with this boxing and the framework has come up, we need to start over. If you pour it up that way, then we've done, uh, then we've basically made everything inaccurate. Across this lingual, I'm just gonna seal it. And what I want to, I'm gonna to have to put several layers of, of uh, rope wax on here to create the land area. What I need to be able to do is see five millimeters of rope wax coming out when I look right straight down. So I need five millimeters of wax coming out here as well as down here where right now I see none. So I'm gonna to have to add several layers down here to pick up that retromolar pad. So it's starting to move around on me, so I'm gonna just seal this first one down using some hot wax. And I don't wanna get, I don't want any wax on this surface. That's where we meet stone against stone. If I have wax on there, there's gonna be a void. So I don't wanna, I don't want a void in that in that area. Any sealing to the stone I'll do, I'll do from up here where it's not a critical spot. But no wax on this surface. Soften up the wax to make it pliable. Go back and add another layer. So I'm just adding onto my rope wax now. This little gap right where that guide plane is, we need to seal that up. Notice I'm still holding this framework down. When we get all done, I'm going to put a little bit of wax on the occlusals of those teeth so that if there is any leakage, because it's not like there's a rubber gasket or anything that's going to keep stone from leaking out of the uh, lingual plate area, so it's very likely that it's going to leak a little bit of stone in there. I don't want it to stick to the Clusals of the teeth that's going to keep it from being mounted properly. So as I look straight down on here, I'm still a little short in this area, so I want to add a little bit more rope wax onto that. Then we can go around it with our piece of boxing wax and we'll be able to pour that up. This one's a little easier since we've only got one side to do. If we've got uh, a Kennedy class one, a bilateral distal extension, then we'd do the same thing on this side, but we don't, we want to try not to remove that centerpiece. So from here, we can go around it with the boxing wax now. 
Notice that the framework is still down. Everything is seated. Make it easier for yourself and make it pliable. And we're not going to test this with water. Okay, I'm going to visually check it to make sure I don't see any gaps or anything that's going to leak stone out real bad. But if I try and soak it with water, the model's going to soak it, get soaked, and the wax is going to have a tendency to fall off. So we're not going to soak this. We'll wet it and then pour it up right away, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to test it. Be careful not to pinch this in because if you do it's going to make the model narrow in that area. If you pinch that in then your cast is going to come out come out the opposite narrow. Make sure that you're trying to you're trying to be straight up and down. Okay. So we could add one more to make that a little bit taller and then we would wet this and then pour it up. Ready? Go. All right, so we got the cast. We put this in the compound bath, softened the border molding compound and removed the partial in the tray from the cast. Trimmed up the land area and trimmed around the edge of the cast. Now we need to get this tray off of here. So I took a peel of the impression material away, broke away some of the, some of the compound, we need to remove the triad that goes through the holes in the grid work because that's what's locking it on. Be careful you don't try and twist this off because you can bend the framework when you do that. So we need to, we need to loosen this up. In the olden days when these were made out of acrylic, not triad light cure, we could heat this up with a flame. But the light cure does not soften that way, so we've got to grind it out of there. being careful about scratching this or grinding on it with a burr. This chrome cobalt, you can barely scratch it. And it's going to be embedded by acrylic, so I'd, I'm not worried about burring into this at all. Now up here I'd be a little more careful, but on this I don't. So we just need to go after it and get that tray off and grind that off. Being careful not to twist it too much here. So now we can go back and put this back on the cast. And the next step would be to make the uh, put a bite block on here 
um, I'll back up a little bit. You'll notice that the tissue stop is off the cast, so that's how much we've corrected. We'll need to add some acrylic back in here around that tissue stop to support the framework so that ultimately when we pack the acrylic, we won't be flexing that down. So a tissue stop on here first, then we'll add wax to it to make our bite block to take our jaw relation record.